Grade sixes, you don't have to be scared if you see this um, page because this is basically just to brief you a little bit more about uh, poems and poetry. You will learn a lot more in grade seven when you have literature as a, a part of English. But for now, we, I'm just going to introduce you to some of the key features of a poem. And um, you will see when we do poems or when we answer questions on uh, poems, it will be very, very basic because it's an additional language. You will also see the highlighted words. If you have printed out these two worksheets, uh, then you are welcome to highlight um, while we do the video or afterwards as you prefer. First sentence. Poetry is a kind of writing, usually in verse. Poetry verse is set out in short lines with words put together in rhythm or rhyme or both. Okay, so this is net in Afrikaans met gedichte. Dit word in verse opverdeel, wat bestaan uit re relatieve kort um, reels. A dichter besluit self hoe sy gedicht moet like, wat er type leestekens, skryftekens, hoofletters, al daar type goed hulle wil insit. So, daar is nie een algemene reel wat gepaard gaan met gedichte nie. The poets decide for themselves. Poetry is about a writer sharing with the reader an experience or strong feelings. Poems are written with words chosen for their sounds and beauty as well as their meaning. So elke dichter wat a gedig skryf wil met ons iets deel of, of gevoelens um, by ons wakker maak. En die woorde wat hulle kies is spesifieke woorde vir die klank, vir hoe dit like um, en dan ook vir die betekenis. So it's very important that we are aware that the poets choose specific words um, in order to create a specific meaning. Each poem conveys the messages or intentions of the poet and these may be obvious or implied. I know a lot of us struggle with uh, determining what the message inside a poem might be, but for this year for additional language, the poems you will do are very basic. They will ask you things like the title, the poet, um, what are the characters compared to, stuff like that. They won't go into the meaning um, as such. That will only be left for, for next year. Then the last line that's important in the, in the opening uh, paragraphs is um, poems paint pictures by means of poetic devices, such as figurative language, rhythm and rhyme. Okay, so poetic devices are the tools that a poet will use, like figurative language, so they will describe the moon as a big block of cheese because they want you to see that it's yellow, um, something like that. Or they will say the clouds are crying, then it's actually rain falling. So they use poetic devices so that you make up a picture in your head. Okay, next we'll look at form. Poem is usually written in lines uh, that's grouped into verses or stanzas. And then in a free verse, a freie vers, the poet defines his own form. There's no restrictions as to rhyme, rhythm or pattern. Then we get to tone. The tone of the poem will reveal the poet's subjective views and attitudes. Okay, this is a important word here. Subjective, but you can subjective. Want daar ons het vroeger gesê, jy kry die idee wat die dichter wil oordra. So, as die dichter een slechter ervaring met iets gehad het, gaan hy dit met jou deel. Um, dus ook om het subjectief is. Subjectief beteken, jy word beinvloed dier jou eie um, ervarings. Um, iemand wat objectief is, beteken, hulle word nie sommer beinvloed nie. Um, so, wees net altyd, in, of hou net altyd in gedachte, subjectief, dit is die dichter, sy opinie, dit is die dichter sy sy boodskap wat hy wil oordra, dit is nie noodwendig waarheid of amal sy opinie nie. The, the tone helps to create the desired mood or atmosphere. This is achieved by word choice as well as the sounds of the words. Okay, so that's very clear. It's all about the word choice creating the mood or atmosphere of the poem. Okay, then we come to imagery, which is probably the most important one. Imagery often involving the senses, so it will say your sentire, conjures up word pictures. It achieves this through a combination of literal and figurative language. So, letterlijke and figurelijke 
taal, jylle dit ook al gedoen in Afrikaans. Figures of speech in Afrikaans, beeldspraak, jylle kan het soms bijskryf op jylle werkveld. Poetry may use metaphors, similes or personifications for comparisons. So net soos Afrikaans, metafore, vergelijkings en dan personificatie. Dis alles deel van beeldspraak. Beeldspraak beteken die specifieke woorde wat hulle gebruik, veroorzaak daar al een beeld, een prentjie in jou kop opkom. The creative use of the sound devices such as alliterations, assonance and onomatopoeia enhances the imagery of the poem. Ok, hier gaan het nou weer oor klanke, die type woorde wat hulle gebruik, um, veroorzaak sekere klanke, en dit draal by, tot hoe jy die prentjies in jou kop vorm. But, grade 6 is please remember, when I said at the start of the video, we will not be testing all of these um, figures of speech, uh, obviously, personification, a metaphor, alliteration, those three will, will be the ones we will focus on and all of the others you will do next year. So don't stress about all of these big words. We will only be doing metaphors, personification and alliteration, which is familiar to you because you have done it in Afrikaans home language as well. Lastly, we come to rhythm and rhyme. Uh, please look at the spelling of the word rhythm. Um, can be confusing sometimes. Poetry often has a rhythm or flow. In this way, poetry is similar to music. Uh, I know some of you uh, who are good with music will know that most songs are actually um, poems or they started off as poems and then the artist just put rhythm into the poems and made music. Rhyme depends on sound not on sight. Okay, very important. Jylle, dit gaan nie oor hoe die woord like nie, dit gaan oor hoe die woord klink. Uh, look at the examples, Valentine, mine, born and dawn. You've got O-R-N and A-W-N at the end of the two words, so they don't look the same at all, but they sound the same. And then teen and seen. Very important, it is the sound at the end of the word. We're also not going to do rhyme patterns. I know you do that in Afrikaans home language, but you don't have to worry. We're not going to focus on any rhyme patterns in additional language. We use figures of speech to create mind pictures or images in order to express ourselves visually, imaginatively and powerfully. Language may be used either in a literal or figurative sense. So dit is wat die woordkies lekker interessant maak baie keer. Dis het of een letterlijke betekenis of een figuurlijke betekenis. Een letterlijke betekenis, dit beteken net soos dit daar staan feitelijk en dan figuurlijk beteken dis opgemaak. Nee. Ok, so literal language is factual. Nikki's boyfriend broke his leg. It actually happened. The leg is broken. But if we speak about figurative language, we have comparisons and suggestive ideas. So Nikki's boyfriend broke her heart. Um, it's figurative, suggesting that she's heartbroken. So her heart is not physically broken. It's just an emotion that she's feeling. Why is this important? It has to do when you have to determine the meaning or the message of the poem. Is the poet being literal or is the poet being figurative? Okay, so if we look at the three common examples of comparisons, vergelijkings, then we get to a simile. If you look quickly, it looks like smile, but you just add an I after the S. So a simile, it's a direct comparison that always contains the words as or like. And then you have a metaphor, which is a comparison without the use of as or like. So those two go together. He is as wealthy as Bill Gates. So you use the words as or like. But if you have a metaphor, you say he is Usain Bolt or he is a Usain Bolt. So you, in both of the sentences, you are comparing the person to either Bill Gates or Usain Bolt. Then you get personification, personification. This is when you give a human quality 
to an inanimate object or abstract ideas. Basis in plein Afrikaans, dis wanneer jy een menselike eigenskap gee vir enige iets wat nie levend is nie. Autumn arrived in his coat of orange. The clouds looked down and wept. So wat beteken die eerste sin? Het beteken herf het aangekom um, of het begin en die coat of orange verwijst na die oranje blare wat van die bome afgeval het. Nee. En dan die volgende in die clouds looked, ons weet mys nou wolke kan nie kyk nie, um, beteken hulle het afgekyk en hulle het die reen het geval. So dit is wolke en herfst kan nie gewoonlik menselike eigenskap heen nie. The last example is alliteration. So this is a sound device. It's the repetition of consonant sounds at the beginning of words. So basis die herhaling van meere klinkers aan die begin van die woorde. It highlights the expression of movement. Football fever fuels fans. Dit gaan oor die F. So it has to be a consonant and it has to be at the beginning of a word.